my rope and my saddle and my horse. And I, I love to hit the leather. Wait on. I'm 
I'm only trying to train you so that you'll be popular with the girls when you grow up. Ouch! Oh, who wants to be popular with girls? I'm going to be a football player. Ouch! Hold still! Oh, Jimmy, if you just hold still a minute, maybe we could get a bit. Oh, there you go. I suppose it's all my fault. You all right? I guess I'm all in one piece. Are you a cowboy? Yeah, sort of. That's what I'm going to be when I grow up. You live around here? Yeah. Do you? We're just moving into the old ranch house across the hill. It ain't as swell as I thought it was going to be. But Dad said that's the only place that he could get on credit. He ain't got no money, Jimmy. The gentleman isn't interested in our family affairs. As long as we are neighbors, I'd like to be neighborly. My name's Bob Blake. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Blake. My name's Jimmy Thompson after my uncle. Her name's Sally after my mother. Mother went with a funeral last year, and that's why I talked so broke. Jimmy, please. Oh, shucks, Sally. Didn't Mr. Blake get you out of the fence? And you don't even want me to say hello. Of course, Jimmy, I want you to say hello. But, but what? Isn't Mr. Blake a nice man? What is happening? Can you call? Why, sure. That is, uh, I thought you'd gone to town. Not yet. Fact is, I thought I'd take a little trip up to Cheyenne. I'll be gone two or three days. How'd you like to run and come on, Ruth? No, thank you. Are you sure you don't want to come along, Ruth? In this heat? Not me. I'll stay home. But have a good time. Good night, Mr. Blake. Come over again sometime. Thank you. I sure will. Good night. Good night, Dad. Poor Dad. He's not very well. You know, I think the work here on the rent. Well, I'd be mighty glad to help out in my spare time. So would some of the other boys in my outfit. Oh, that's mighty nice of you. But Dad's sort of funny about letting folks help him. Yippee! Yippee! <laughs> he never stops talking, even when he's asleep. There goes my boss, Mr. Steele. Guess I better mosey along now, because I gotta see him. Jimmy, Jimmy, wake up. Mr. Blake's leaving. You going? When you brand some more cows and horses, can I come over and help? <laughs> sure, you bet. Well, good night, Sally. Good night. Oh, wait. You forgot your gun. Well, I was aiming to leave it. Why? So that I have an excuse to come back tomorrow. Oh, you don't need an excuse. Don't I? Swell.
So this is why you want to stay home. You dirty rats. You'll be all right, Mr. Steele. Here, let's get your collar open. Is that better? husband is dead. You ought to blame for this. Who did it? What happened, Bob? Someone shot the boy. Give me the sheriff's office. This is Mrs. John Steele. My husband has been shot. Yes, killed. Yes, I know who did it. All right. Please hurry. Sheriff Mr. Steele. Sorry to disturb you, but you said you knew. Who was it? Bob Blake. It's a lie. Bob Blake. Are you sure it was Bob? Did you see him do it? Look at his gun, Sheriff. my gun. Well, you're wearing it. What's it doing in your holster? I don't know, but I'm telling you, that's not my gun. Maybe not, but you wear it. I guess I'll have to take you in, Bob. Now, Mrs. Steele, would you mind telling me just exactly what happened? This man has been annoying me for some time. Tonight, my husband caught him. Caught him? Yes, trying to force his way into my room. Don't let him get away! I've got it! I've got it! Let go! You've got me, you fool!
Stay where you are. Well, you're going to tell me the truth, or I'm going to choke it out of you. All right, big boy. Stop choking. Here's the pay you've got coming. And I'd advise you to get across the border. Tonight. All right. You win now. But I'll be back. When I do. This sheriff will still be waiting for you. What are you doing here? I rode out there. Don't you see my horse? Trying to help your brother get away, huh? No, sir. I thought y'all wanted to race. I ought to run you in. Well, y'all run me out there. You might as well run me in. Ah. Come on.
buy a drink, and then I'll have to ramble on. Hello, Deacon. I haven't seen you for weeks. Where have you been? Come on over to the bar and have a little drink with me on the house. What's your hurry, handsome? Set a spell. Well, hello, honey. Sure glad to see you. Yeah? Of course I am. Why don't you tell him? Shut up. Mister, do you know how to pray? Yeah. Now I lay me down to sleep. How's that? Very good. But not good enough. Deacon, honey, listen. The man didn't do nothing to you. He didn't make no passes at me. I flirted with him. Oh. You flirted with him, did you? Yes, I did. Why not? Do you ever come around? Why I went for him? Look at it. He's a better image of his children. Not quite so smooth in his fingers. Quite a resemblance, indeed. But one that might be disastrous to you, my friend. One little incident like this can be overlooked. For the good book says we must temper justice with mercy. But if you hang around Harlem, some other ladies might make the same mistake. And then... Oh, that's it, huh? Fool around with other ladies. Why, you know, Kisler, pressing on me again. Well, Barker, you're going to pay me or not? There you are. Easy money, isn't it? Well, I don't know. Hey, Bud. How'd you like to make some real money? What do you call real money? One thousand dollars. That all depends. What's the job? It's a cinch. I want a certain woman, uh, well, uh, eliminated. Uh, 
Wait a minute, Butch. I'll make it $2,000. Okay. Cash. When the job is... Who's the woman? Reverend. And your brother Carter, I believe. And who are you? Allow me to introduce myself. Mr. But that paper said that you is dead. As Mark Twain once said, the report of my death has been greatly exaggerated. But in this case, I find it very convenient. Yeah, I can see that all right. Now. How did they happen to come here? It is written in the good book, brother, that providence shall guide the footsteps of the weary pilgrim to a haven of peace and rest. <coughs> I see you have another guest, a noisy one. Yeah, but she won't make no noise after tomorrow. Oh, you're going to, uh... Yeah. Not until after I collect. See? An excellent idea. I see you're a very good businessman. Oh, I'm not so dumb. Two thousand ain't bad for one night's work, is it? Handy with that gun, ain't you? Who are you to miss? Brother, the next time I miss will be the first time. So you get $2,000 for the night's work, eh? In New York, they work much cheaper. You know, so much competition. Ow! Ow! Is someone likely to hear her? No, there's nobody within 10 miles of it. Why we hang out here? Then why not keep her for a while? She must know something. That's why somebody's paying you to get rid of her. All right, collect the two thousand dollars. 
tell them you did the job. And then collect again. And keep on. I've got to find some woman. Bob, you say you too. They won't be watching you so close. Then you can get your chance. Look out. City fellas get up mighty early and mighty quiet, don't you? And you rule against that? Now, don't go snooping around here quiet like. It ain't healthy. I've never been sick a day in my life, Brother Carter. Now, now, now don't go get sore about it. You know how it is, a fellow. Well, you can't be too careful. I'm going to take a little ride right after breakfast. Uh, a little collection to do. You want to go along? Well, uh, I... Sure, I'd like to see some of the country here around about. If you all don't get back time for lunch, you're going to miss the best mess of chitlins that you ever laid your lips over. Brother, did you say chitlins? I didn't say nothing else but. You may count on me. Hey, Deacon, for a tenderfoot, you handle a bronc pretty good. Well, I used to be 11th Avenue Cowboy. 11th Avenue Cowboy? Sure, I used to ride down 11th Avenue in front of the train, waving a red lantern. Was you ever a real preacher? I preached the gospel, brother. Gun gospel. Where do we go from here? I reckon you'd better not go any further. You know me around here as a miner. Someone might recognize you. Town people's likely to get kind of stirred up about that woman, you know, who can't... Uh... You're right, brother. I'll wait for you here. Oh, don't bother about waiting. I'll see you later, champ. Excitement. Excitement of plenty. Miss Steele's been murdered or kidnapped. I don't know which. Mrs. Steele? Murdered? Why, that's terrible, Chef. Is there anything I can do? I'm afraid not, Mr. Barker. I'd give a thousand dollars reward for the capture of them. We've got to make this community safe to live in. Okay, Mr. Barker. I'll do all I can. See you later. Lost your father? Yeah. And now we gotta move because Sally won't marry Mr. Barker. He's the guy that's got all the mortgages. 
Ruby's doing this rag. And he says if Sally marries him, he'll send me to school. If Sally don't like him, and I don't want to go to school. I want a job taking care of us. I don't want a present. I don't even know you. Sure you do. You met me at the post office the other day. Oh, come on, kid. Let's get acquainted. And so we can't get the $2,000 by this afternoon, and Sally won't marry him, and we have to get out. This man had won the house. So sister's, uh... Boyfriend? No. Nah. Her boyfriend. I know she's stuck on him. Every, she got mad every time I talked about him killing his boss. He said he didn't do it. I don't think he did it either. But if he did, he had a good reason for it. He was a swell fella. He was a cowboy. And that's where I'm going to be Wait when a minute. I'm... You get my horse a drink of water. Let me go, you... Uh, oh. Come on, Kip, don't be so stingy. Hey, you... Say, what's the idea? What are you doing here? Oh, I just took a little ride, Butch. And while I was riding, I composed a beautiful burial sermon. Would you like to hear it? No. No. Oh, I was only kidding, Deacon. I, I ain't sore. I was, uh... She was... Oh, come on, let's get out of here. Not so fast, brother. Mmm, smells good. Sister, be a good Samaritan and feed two starving pilgrims. We are famished. Would you turn us from your door? If you're hungry, I'd, I'd be glad to feed you. Come on. Sit down, have a bite. No, thank you. I'm not hungry. Come, sister, sit down. No, I'd rather wait for dinner. Sit down. There. I don't see anything. Look again. Don't you see? No, what is it? Oh, your fortune. Come, I'll read it to you. Oh. I see a man. He wishes to marry you. He has much land, many cattle, but you do not love him. I see another man. He is walking alone, under a cloud. He's in great danger, but he loves you. Someday, he'll come back. And I think you'll get your wish. I say you'll get your wish. Thank you, sir. It was a lovely fortune. But I don't think it'll come true. Oh, so you don't think I know what I'm talking about, eh? Very well. I shall eat. Brother Carter, I think you need a little more coffee. Thanks. Well, miss, 
How much do we owe you for his dinner? Well, Judy, I shouldn't take pay. I... Very well. I'll set the price. Butch, pay the lady for our dinner. Huh? Oh, oh yeah. How much? Pay her $2,000. $2,000? Why, you... Take it. Oh, no. You don't want it? Well, I'll take it back. Come on, let's go. For my answer, Sally. I can do a lot for you, and for the boy too, if you only let me. Mm. Hear me. It's all right, Sally. You we'll send him to school where they'll make a little uh, gentleman out of him. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Buck. I can't marry you. Don't be foolish, child. You don't want to move away from here, do you? But he loves you. And someday, he'll come back. No, and I won't move away from here either. Here's your money, Mr. Barker. Hooray, I'll right, be foot. Where'd you get this money? Never mind where we got it from. We didn't ask you where you got yours when you learned to park. Give us our note. You get back to the mine. I've got a little business to take care of. Alone. What about the interest? There isn't any interest. You loaned my father fifteen hundred and made him sign a note for two thousand. And we have papers to prove it. The note, please, Mr. Walker. I hope you aren't making a mistake, Sally. And here's the door, Mr. Walker, in case you forgot. And don't look back. Remember what happened to Lot's wife. You little devil, I'll wring your neck.
Sitting there quiet like, and he comes in from behind and sticks a gun in my back and takes the dough. Well, what could I do? He had to drop on me. Well, I knew it was something crooked about that guy. Yeah, I knew it too. Well, what you gonna do about it? Hey, you boys get your rifle. And if he comes over the hill, ventilate him. But don't let him get close enough to use his gun. I'll stay here and plug him from the window if he comes up the canyon. Okay, sir. Trying to shoot a rabbit. No, a rat. Well, what you want with a rat? Shut up. Yes. Hey, sir. What happened to Lot's wife? Lot's wife? Oh, you mean the lady in the Bible? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, she done turned to salt. You see, she lived in a town of soda. So she married a fella by the name of Lot. Now, why they call him Lot? was because he had a lot of dough and a lot of sheep and everything. <laughs> so she started traveling around with a fella from Sonora. Now that's where Salt Lake is now. But she started traveling around with him and the neighbors started scandalizing and going on. You, you know how they do, see? So she's on her way home and just as she started out, one of the neighbors said, honey, so your husband is looking for you and she got scared because she knew she's traveling around on her husband, see? And she started running. And she started running down the street and just as she got two blocks away from where she was, it started raining. And the rain started pouring down. It rained 40 days and 40 nights. Oh, man, it was cold. And she kept on running and looking back. So she got tired. See, she got to a place and she sat down, called herself going to rest. And you know she couldn't move. She sat right there and couldn't move. She hadn't turned to no stones or nothing like that. And she didn't turn to salt. And the water kept on getting up on her. And, and it kept on melting her. And kept on melting her. And it melted her. She got that little load until it washed away. And when the water washed away, that's how come the lake is salty. Rubber, you'd better take another look at your body. Looking for someone? Who, me? No. No? Well, oh, what's the deal? No, sir. He just said he was aiming to shoot a rat. I thought you might be the least bit sore about this. Hey, what's the idea? It's all right, fellas. I had to tell you all wrong. Look, Deacon's a great guy. Me and him's going to be partners, ain't we? Sure, boy. <laughs> When I get back east, I'm going to make you my western representative. Come on, boys. We've got a little work to do. See you later, Deacon. Look at them high-tailed on the run. I wonder what they're up to. I don't know. But now's our chance. Come on. Look out for me. Well, sister, how are you feeling? I'll pay you well to get me out of here. Will you pay as much as John Barker paid to put you in there? What? Did he pay you to kidnap me? Not exactly. He paid to have you murdered. 
$2,000. I'll give you my rent. I'll give you anything you ask. If you'll just get me out of here, I'm rich. I can pay. Why are you so anxious to get out of there? To see John Barker hang. For what? Kidnapping? No. For murdering my husband. Then Barker killed your husband, did he? Yes, yes. And now he's trying to kill me. What's up? Keep an eye on this woman. I'm making a hurry. We're going to have coffee. Let me do the talking. Will you do me a favor? Sure. Get to town as fast as you can. Tell the sheriff and his deputies to come to the old mines in Perdita Canyon right away. What if they won't come? Tell them I've kidnapped your sister. That'll get them. Say, what's the big idea? Don't you trust me, Jimmy? You bet. who he is. And that girl paid me with my own money. <laughs> yeah, and then he took it away from you. <laughs> you crazy if you think he'll get away with that. But that ain't all, boss. Mrs. Steele is up at the mine and the deacon wouldn't let me go in there to say anything to her. Why, you double-crossing rat. You told me. I know I did, boss. But listen, now, let me tell you, it's like this. I couldn't do anything. Shut up. That settles it. Now listen to me, you yellow mugs. You, Johnson, you go to town and tell the sheriff that you and Butch saw this deacon guy take me to steal up to the mine. Don't worry. We need time to get there before the sheriff does. And Butch, you and Ted and me are going up there, and I'm going to see to it that you finish the job I paid you for. And uh, in the meantime, we'll give this deacon fellow a bad case of lead poisoning. And when the sheriff gets there, we'll tell him that the deacon did it, and we killed him, Trying to protect the woman. Not me. That guy shoots too straight and too fast and with both hands. He hasn't got eyes in the back of his head, has he? If he's in the house, we'll go in and talk to him kind of peaceful-like. Ted will stay outside and plug him in the back through the window. Then you take care of the lady. All right. Give us about ten minutes, Johnson. Then ride to the sheriff's office real fast. So your horse will be all lathered up good. Come on. Do what I tell you, everything will be all right. Will you sit down there and act quiet for about two minutes? No, I won't. All right, then. Have a choice. There now. In a couple of minutes, you'll know what this is all about. Nothing? No. We just want to have a little understanding, see? 
Now, uh, if you expect Butch and the boys to let you hide out here, you've got to be reasonable. You probably didn't know that they were working for me, or you wouldn't have held me up. Now, would you? Well, what's your proposition? Very simple. You leave us alone, and we leave you alone. That's fair, ain't it? I'm willing to forget about that little affair you pulled this afternoon. Anything to say for yourself? I can explain everything, Sheriff. In the first place, I don't think they're dead. That one's moving now. And in the second place, the girl wasn't kidnapped. She was too kidnapped. You told me yourself you were going to kidnap her. And he told me to tell you he was doing it. And that was to be sure you had come. Because I said you wouldn't. But he said you had to, so I'd be sure to tell you. Since you so long getting here, everything was over. And that's why I don't never want to be in jail. Would I sent that boy to fetch you if I'd have been really kidnapping his sister? But there's been kidnapping and murder, too. And if you come outside with me to the old mine, I'll show you who really is the guilty party. All right. But watch them, boys. Bring them along and watch them, too. on Bob's plate. He showed his gratitude. He paid that man to kidnap me, to murder me. Take him away, boys. Take Miss Steele, too. You hold as a witness. I always thought there was something fishy about this whole business. That's why I never bothered about you parading around in that so-called disguise of yours. I mean you, Bob Blake. Bob! Yeah. See if you can keep him out of mischief, Sally. I'll be needing him when the trial comes up. By the way, you better be getting Jimmy off of that hook. Jimmy, are you all right? How did you get down? All of a sudden. Jimmy, who do you think the deacon was? Why, he's Bob Blake. You were Bob Lake, pretending to be a bandit. I might have known that. Well, I guess you might as well go in and marry Sally. There's a lot of work got to be done at the ranch. Jimmy. Oh, go on, kiss her. Get it over with. Check is waiting for you. Well, I'll be seeing you. Jimmy, the next time I go courting, I'm sure going to take you with me. You is the jivenest little boy I ever did see. Oh, sure. What if this swell, if he's a real bandit, is not going to join his gang? 